Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe button and share with your fellow denarian friends to help support our channel. Believe me it makes a huge difference and is very much appreciated. I thank you. Be sure to check out our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the dinar community. Created by a denarian, for denarians, to ensure your exchange goes smoothly and for mapping out all your future financial goals and assets. Use the promo code, the denarian, and get 25% off along with the newly upgraded mobile application added free for my subscribers. A preview of both the mobile application and the desktop planner is made available on the website for your convenience. I am also recommending you register as an affiliate today with the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program, the gold program made for the financially challenged as I like to call it. It makes saving physical gold easy and affordable for everyone, one gram at a time. Now is the time to get involved if you have not already done so. Both the links to the currency exchange planner as well as the Carrot Bar Gold Savings Program are in the description box below. First article of interest for today, the House of Representatives announces the completion of the completion of the Constitutional Amendments. The Constitutional Amendments Committee revealed in the House of Representatives, on Thursday, the imminent conclusion of the amendments to the Constitution and their submission to the popular referendum. Deputy Committee Chairman Youssef Mohammed said in a statement to Al Saban newspaper today that the committee has previously taken the opinions of citizens, elites and legal experts to discuss constitutional amendments that can be agreed upon, in addition to other disputed articles. He added, the committee produced these materials for discussion in general, to reach satisfactory solutions for all parties noting that it has accomplished more than 50% of its work within the time specified for it within four months. For his part, the deputy of the Alliance of Fath, Fadl al-Fatlawi, said in a press statement, the Constitutional Amendments Committee is limited to four months to finish all the amendments, and therefore the completion of this file will be the beginning of next month or the beginning of the new legislative term for Parliament. Next article of interest the suffering of the citizen will increase. A former minister warns of nine consequences of the delay in approving the budget. Former Minister of Youth and Sports Abdul Hussein Abton, on Thursday, spoke about nine consequences of the delay in approving the budget law in 2020, while warning of high unemployment and increasing the suffering of citizens. Abton said in a post on his Facebook page that Iraq has suffered since 2014 an economic recession due to the state of security instability and the consequent economic and living consequences, as well as the stopping of the construction and building movement, which increased unemployment rates and the difficulty in providing decent living for a large number of families. He added, in 2018, the victory over ISIS was achieved. By the grace of Allah, the fatwa of the blessed reference and the heroic stances of the security forces and the sacred popular crowd. In light of this, the military expenditures decreased and a remarkable rise in oil prices coincided with it. He continued, the year 2019 has ended and the citizen is awaiting the 2020 budget, but unfortunately until now the budget has not been sent to Parliament, and this will lead to the following. One. The budget disbursement for strategic projects, the investment budget, has stopped for all ministries, independent bodies, and governorates, which amounts to approximately $30 billion. 2. Pushing the development of the regions of the province's budget stopped. 3. Payment balance of petrodollars to the provinces stopped. 4. Payment one-twelfth of the operating budget of the ministries and independent bodies and provinces. Five. This means stop reconstruction and increase the movement of the unemployment rate. 6. Reluctance to provide the ration card. 7. Feet dragging and providing supplies by the departments of state and that the impact on the performance of government institutions. 8. Difficulty paying farmers dues. 9. Payment of contractor dues and contracting companies with central and local government institutions has ceased. 
Next article of interest. Abdul Mahdi chairs a meeting on projects of the Iraqi Chinese agreement. Today, resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi chaired a meeting on the projects of the Iraqi Chinese agreement in various parts of Iraq. And the media office of Abdul Mahdi added in a statement that Al Farid News received a copy of that the meeting came to follow up the implementation policies and complete the presentation of the most feasible projects related to infrastructure development in the fields of roads, transportation, energy, housing, petrochemicals, and others. Priorities were discussed for productive projects that would develop the economy, support the private sector and operate the workforce. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Planning, a number of undersecretaries and advisors to the Prime Minister. Next article of interest. Washington makes the first comment on the crisis of naming a new Prime Minister of Iraq. U.S. President's special envoy, Donald Trump, for Syria and the International Alliance, James Jeffrey, Thursday, January 23, 2020 made the first U.S. comment on the crisis of naming a new prime minister for Iraq. Jeffrey said in a press conference, There is mobility in the Iraqi street, and Iraqis have to decide who chooses him as prime minister and does not enter the United States in Iraqi affairs. He added, Addressing the issue of the candidates for prime minister in Iraq is a matter for the Iraqis alone, and what concerns us is that a new Iraqi government that is subject to Iran does not come. Concerning the presence of the American forces in Iraq, Jeffrey said, Our presence in Iraq came with the desire of the Iraqi government and our situation and our future in the country is linked to a decision from Baghdad. Noting that, the operations of the international coalition in Iraq are currently suspended. Noting that, the international coalition exchanges information with Iraqis about confronting ISIS. He noted that, the international coalition agreement with the Iraqi authorities is to stay until the elimination of ISIS, stressing that, our efforts in the war against ISIS must continue and we will not relent in their war. Jeffrey said, we are ready to discuss with the Iraqi government and agree on the status of American forces, noting that, our mission in Iraq came according to an agreement concluded in 2014 and its goal is to eliminate the threat of ISIS. The U.S. President's envoy added, We have suffered 11 attacks in Iraq since storming the vicinity of the American embassy. He went on to say, what is important for us is that a new Iraqi government subject to Iran does not come and the issue is purely an Iraqi affair, noting that there is mobility in the street and that the Iraqis have to decide who they choose as prime minister and do not enter the United States in Iraqi affairs. He explained, addressing the issue of candidates for prime minister in Iraq is a matter for Iraqis alone. On Sunday, January 5, 2020, the House of Representatives voted in an extraordinary session on the departure of all foreign and American forces from Iraq, the abolition of the role of the international coalition in Iraq, as well as the abolition of the security agreement with the United States of America, by the Iraqi government. Next article of interest. Five big central banks unite to explore launching their own digital currencies. In the beginning, there was Satoshi. It's been a little over a decade since the pseudonymous founder of Bitcoin introduced the blockchain-based cryptocurrency that launched a thousand more blockchain-based cryptocurrencies. Since then, not a few folks have speculated that Bitcoin would take over the world and perhaps even supplant central bank-controlled fiat currencies. While central banks have taken cryptocurrencies more and more seriously over the years, they also remain the ultimate authorities any rising new form of money must reckon with before knocking down the system. If anything replaces fiat currencies, in stable economies, at least, it would likely need central bank support or even be issued by a central bank. To that end, the Bank of England, Bank of Japan, European Central Bank, Bank of Canada, and Sveriges Riks Bank, Sweden's Central Bank, along with the Bank of International Settlements recently announced that they've banded together to research central bank digital currencies. The new group, co-chaired by Benoit C. Uri, head of the Bank of International Settlements, BIS, Innovation Hub, and John Cunliffe, 
Deputy Governor of the Bank of England and Chair of the Committee on Payments and Market Infrastructures at the BIS, will openly share their findings and experiences. They'll look into emerging technologies, use cases, and digital currency design options, including how such currencies would work across national borders. The group's formation is in a commitment to launch a central bank digital currency, but the coalition shows how far the idea has come and how much weight it has with central banks. Indeed, a survey conducted by the BIS a year ago found some 70% of central banks had central bank digital currency projects in the works or underway. Why now? Central banks have been researching what it would take to digitize fiat currencies for years, and a few are even beginning to launch pilots. But after last year's announcement of Facebook-backed cryptocurrency, Libra, the pressure to act increased significantly. Bitcoin represents a small fraction of the world's money, even combined with all the other major cryptocurrencies. It's a fascinating, controversial, at times lurid experiment, but doesn't yet rival fiat currencies. Libra, on the other hand, with access to Facebook's nearly 2.5 billion monthly active users, could reach a notable fraction of the world's population more than any single central bank, including China's, at launch. And did it do so across borders? Which is why Libra raised regulatory hackles just minutes after the plans went public. While Libra's future is uncertain, a number of backers have left the project and regulators continue their scrutiny. It seems to have had one significant effect. Some of the biggest central banks in the world appear to be accelerating their plans for digital currencies. Some of the benefits of central bank digital currencies may include faster, cheaper, and more secure payments, especially across borders. They might also reduce money laundering and tax evasion, offer more refined methods for managing inflation, and give central banks more direct, flexible monetary and fiscal policy tools in economic crises. How digital fiat currencies would work in practice remains unclear. There are a number of proposed designs for central bank digital currencies which range from completely anonymous, unlikely, to totally transparent. A degree of privacy will probably be important, whether they'll bear interest, and who has access to them, everyone or financial institutions. The new central bank group will continue sorting through the pros and cons. Still, alongside continued research, some are closer to implementation than others. Uruguay completed a central bank digital currency pilot in 2018, the E-Peso, and in Sweden, where almost 80% of transactions are digital, the Sveriges Riks Bank is creating a pilot digital currency known as the E-Krona. China too, where the majority of payments are mobile, appears to be closing in on a digital currency pilot. Is the end of cold cash upon us? Perhaps. But there are those who question whether that's such a good thing. The end of hard currency could also usher in a new level of government surveillance. While such surveillance is no secret in autocratic countries, and is on the rise thanks to digital technologies, it's increasingly controversial in democracies too where large companies hoover up personal data with alacrity. Our transactions say more about us than our words. The more your daily spend is microtract, the more likely you are to face an Orwellian outcome. In this sense, the fight for private payments is a moral one, Alex Gladstein, chief strategy officer at the Human Rights Foundation and faculty at Singularity University, wrote last year. Gladstein is under no illusions about the demise of hard currency, suggesting cash usage will sink to near zero in the next decade, which is why he says building privacy into digital alternatives will be critical. Though some privacy may be offered at the central bank level, Gladstein favors decentralized payment methods, like the Bitcoin-based Lightning Network, or its competitors. Fiat money won't disappear, but is secure global payment system may grow alongside it, offering an alternative to paper dollars, pounds, yen, and yuan. While last decade witnessed the birth and steep rise of cryptocurrency in public awareness, this decade may see a multitude of digital currencies grow up in parallel, public and private, centralized and decentralized, or some combination of these.
The details are clearly still in the works, but increasingly, it appears the future of money is digital. Go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit my Denarian blog for all of today's articles of interest and find me on Facebook as I also post them on there as well. Take a moment and visit our sponsor, the Currency Exchange Planner, voted the number one exchange planner made by a Denarian for Denarians. Use the promo code, the Denarian, to get 25% off at checkout along with the mobile application added free for being my subscriber. Register today as an affiliate with the Gold Savings Carrot Bar program. If you do not keep your savings in a real asset like gold, you risk everything as the fiat system fails. Protect your family's wealth today in physical gold, as tomorrow may be delayed. This program is made so even low-income people can buy gold, by offering it one gram at a time, which makes it affordable to everyone. Get involved today. It's free to register and secure your family's savings tomorrow. You can always turn gold into any kind of fiat money you want or need later. The gold will always be in your possession not the banks who do not care about your well-being. Above all the gold will retain its purchasing power in good times as well as bad. The dollar will not. Ask yourself this. Why are all the central banks loading up on gold lately and running from the current depreciating fiat US dollar? Do you think they do not know what is coming? Get yourself protected today, before it's too late. Both of the links to these invaluable programs are available in the description box below this video. Go check them out. Knowledge is power. Over and out. The Denarian.